Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here today with KG. This is a reunion uh, trip. Uh, you may re remember him from our bullfrog video that we did together. Well, today we're going to do something I always wanted to do. We're going to kind of do a bio blitz on my property here in the Appalachian Mountains at 2,700 feet on the Blue Ridge in Floyd County, Virginia, in far south Virginia. And we're going to see how many different species of salamanders we can find today. We've had a week of, of dry weather. Last night we had some rain. It was a little foggy and damp this morning. So I hope that'll bring some things up to the surface. If you see this video, it means because we found stuff. If you don't see this video, it means it's dry and it was never published and we didn't find anything. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. Take a look. So we've been turning space. over um, a lot of different logs through here and taking a look, see what we find underneath. And then we carefully put the logs right back to where we found them and be able to check them out another day. Hey, there's something Oop. right there. I think it's another slimy, but it's... Red back. Oh, cool. All right. So here we have a red back salamander. Nice. Nice. And so we always bring a spray bottle with us to wet our hands if we're going to hold the salamander. This is a really beautiful red back salamander, one of our lungless salamanders in the plethodon category. I always say in my opener, you never know what you might find. And here is, uh, we've disrupted a community of ants that have all their eggs and pupa laid out. That's really amazing. That is a lot of ants at work here. A lot. So under this log, we picked up this beautiful slimy salamander. And that's actually its name. It's called a slimy salamander. And I've got a couple episodes on them if you want to learn more about them. Again, we always spray our hands before we pick up a salamander, make sure our hands are moist and devoid and free of detergents. These slimy salamanders, I think, are just beautiful with that deep jet black color and the little stars all over them on the black background. So some of these logs I've cut in strategic locations so that I can some, at some point turn them over and check out what's underneath. So that's what we're going to do right now. All right. Check this one out. Beetle. Beetle. Oh wait, there's a little slimy, a very small. Oh. Nice. They are so cool. Love it. Oh, a big one. We're having good luck. Oh, wow, he is a beauty, wow. So we're really hitting the slimy salamanders today. This is our fourth or fifth, I think, of the day. They're just radiant, a deep blue-black color and those white specks, it's amazing, very amazing, pretty cool. So what we do is we roll the log back into place and after we've rolled the log there, then we'll set the salamander down on the ground and give an opportunity to find the right place to go. Again, as I cleared uh, my Jeep trail here with uh, deadfalls, I strategically left logs cut to lengths that I could turn over later and explore our local 
ecology. Find me. I know I saw it. Hey. Probably went in all they, the sleep litter. Yeah, they are. Oh, red back. Oh, cool. Beautiful red back salamander. He's a little spotted too. Yeah. I'm here in a bottomland where I also have another piece of tin and I'm surrounded by skunk cabbage. I've got a couple of videos on these too. These are the first plants to flower and emerge from the ground in the spring and can actually melt snow. And they're a rare thermogenic plant. Check out my video on skunk cabbage if you want to learn more about that. I'm going to get down into the creek here, flip over a couple of these rocks. This is a pretty good uh, southern two-line salamander habitat. We'll see if, if we could get lucky here. Oh, cool. And there's our crawdad. Now this looks like some pretty good salamander habitat right here. There's a lot of sediment, so when we turn over a rock, put that net down there in case something might swim out. Hard with all the little side stream things. Here's some of the stream st stone flies that we found under the rocks. These are the larvae of winged adults. They have very short lifespans as adults. And these will live in creeks and rivers for one to three years. That looks like one of the uh, Desmonathes. It could be dusky, black bellied, or a seal. And it's hard to s tell just from looking at this uh, juvenile. Uh, but I, I can I, I can baby. see his his tail is flattened. This appears to be our day for slimy salamanders. This has been the dominant salamander of the day for sure. So beautiful. Oh, whoa. That is Just big. flip that all the way back. Oh, that's a big crawdad. <laughs> yeah. Let me flip that all the way back. So these crayfish have built these big tunnels. They built this massive network. Of tunnels you have to see my crayfish tunnel burrowing crayfish video but um, go ahead and wet your hands get your hand get a little mud and water on your hands and see if we can pick this up one up and see he's fast. what it is he's super super fast this looks like one of the big old black bellied salamanders look at that look how big and stout that guy is yeah, look at it. He's a magnificent Is salamander. Black? Let's uh, take a look. The black-bellied ones here didn't have a super, super black belly on them. See the flattened tail? Very stout, powerful salamander. So um, these are the, in the group Desimonathes. Include the duskies, the black-bellied salamanders, and some others. And they're really notoriously difficult to distinguish. There's a lot of variability in their color patterns and even for experts it's hard to be sure what species you've got. But I'm leaning towards the black-bellied salamander on this one. This belly is not black black but it is pretty dark. I'm still leaning towards black-bellied salamander here. So we always return these. We put the rock or piece of metal back and we let the salamander choose where to go. Oh, cool. Oh, he's actually a little different. Yeah. He has spots. Oh, this looks like a seal salamander. The seal salamanders have those spots like on a, I, I say like on a leopard seal. Yeah. We, yeah, you can definitely see those spots. 
that looks like a seal salamander, where the other one was the black bellied. What? So this one's belly. So this one's belly is much, much lighter in color. And you're gonna have to oh take. Oh my goodness! You'll have to take our word for it. He's under your... It's a bigger seal one. Oh really? Put back. Oh, oh cool. So this one is a a seal salamander. And another reason they get the name seal salamander is because they hold their heads up and look like a seal. See how he's holding his, oh, yeah, just like that. Just like that. That's how they get the name seal salamander. Oh, there goes one. Like another seal salamander with the spotted flecking and holding his head up like a seal. Oh, a big, I don't even know what it is. Jump. <laughs> there he is. Another big old, healthy, robust looking salamander. That looks like a pretty consistent dark color. And he just, I think, is the heaviest body of all of them. I think that's the black belly again. There's this really stout, strong, powerful Ooh, salamanders. Nice well, I hope you enjoyed this impromptu episode of Nature at Your Door, where apparently we did a salamander survey. I'm always surprised that we don't find any other herps or snakes, because we've got so many different salamanders here. Great habitat. By the pond, we've also got um, the red spotted newt. We've got a water snake that I see occasionally there, and lots and lots of green frogs. But we see very, very few snakes. I'm surprised we didn't find some sort of uh, snake so far. So we found, what did we find? We found a seal salamander, a slimy salamander, redback, and a black belly salamander. Black belly. So we found four species of salamanders today. On other days, I found spring salamanders, red salamanders, and two lined salamanders. And of course, in the stream, there's a host of larva. So remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe. Check out my reptile and amphibian playlists. Um, I've covered most of the East Coast's uh, frogs and salamanders. And I'm trying to build on what I'm sharing here. So thanks, KG, for, for helping me out turn things over today. And we'll catch you for the next episode. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, and turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door with Frank and Katie.